Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this lesson video, I will be discussing a topic under the subject of statistics, and this is all about the stratified and cluster sampling techniques. Join me all throughout the entire video and I will explain to you the concepts, similarities, and the differences of these two sampling techniques and as well as to learn when to use such sampling technique. I am your teacher, Sir Mark LaRoya. Stratified and clustered sampling techniques are just two of the four types of probability sampling. When we say probability sampling, samples are chosen in such a way that each member of the population has a known equal chance of being included in the sample. The other two types of probability sampling are the simple random sampling, which is also known as SRS, and the other one is the systematic sampling. So let us now proceed with the discussion about the cluster sampling. This method is also known as area sampling. It is usually used when population is very, very large. In this technique, the individuals that comprise the population are grouped and they will now be called as clusters. Next, the clusters will be chosen randomly to identify the clusters which will be involved in the study. So for example, we're going to choose six clusters. Randomly, we chose B, E, D, J, N, and H. After determining the groups or clusters that will be involved in the study, you can now choose the elements or individuals randomly from each group or cluster to form your sample. And that is how you do or conduct the cluster sampling. So next is the stratified sampling. This method of sampling is done by dividing the population into distinct groups called strata. After the grouping, draw randomly the individuals or elements from each stratum to form your sample. So this is how we do or conduct stratified sampling. Let us now differentiate these two different sampling techniques. In stratified sampling, all strata or groups will be represented in the sample. In cluster sampling, not all clusters will be represented in the sample because some clusters may possibly not be chosen as clusters where sample will be coming from. In stratified sampling, after determining the strata or groups, it will be followed by SRS to choose the elements or individuals for the sample. While in cluster sampling, after determining the clusters or groups, SRS will be done to select clusters where the elements or individuals of the sample will be coming from. The only similarity between these two types of probability sampling is the individuals comprising the population will be grouped distinctively. So let us now proceed with the detailed procedures on how to conduct stratified sampling technique. There are two types of allocations that we have to consider in conducting this sampling technique. The first one is the equal allocation. This process chooses the same number of individuals or elements from each group or stratum, regardless of their differences in size, to form the sample. So for example, you will be needing 100 respondents, or that is your sample size, and you have 5 strata. So that means for equal allocation, divide your sample size into the number of your strata, which is 5. So for each stratum, you will be having 20 individuals that will represent your stratum to the sample. The other one is the proportional allocation. This process chooses particular number of individuals or elements proportional to the size of each group or stratum to form the sample. So for further explanation, I will be giving you some examples. 
We now have here the sample problem number one. Suppose a population is divided into four strata, A, B, C, and D, and you are going to conduct a survey for your research and you need 100 respondents. And that is your small n. Small n stands for the sample size, the number of the individuals in our sample. Let's say A has a size of 200, B with 300, C has 250 as well as stratum D. So we will be doing the stratified sampling using the equal allocation. Step 1, divide the sample size by the number of strata. So our sample or sample size is 160 respondents and our strata or number of strata is 4. A, B, C, and D. So, 160 divided by 4 equals 40. Select randomly a number of 40 individuals per stratum. It's because in equal allocation, number of individuals per stratum to be part of the sample are equal. And step 3, gather all 40 individuals from each stratum to form the sample size equal to 160. So this is how we do the stratified sampling using equal allocation. So this is how equal allocation for stratified sampling technique looks like. So you have the four strata with their given sizes. And then since this is equal allocation, each group will have 40 representatives to become part of the sample. Still in sample problem number one, this time what we're going to do is to do the stratified sampling technique using the proportional allocation. Step one, add all the individuals per stratum to determine the population. So we simply add the individual sizes and then we will get a sum of 1,000 individuals. 200 plus 300 plus 250 and 250, we have 1,000 individuals. That is our population size. Now for step two, divide the size of each stratum with the population to determine their proportions. So we will be able to determine the proportion of each stratum. For A, 200 divided by 1,000, that will give us 0 0.2. For B, 300 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.3. For C and D, both 250 divided by 1,000, we have 0 0.25. So if you notice, the group or the stratum with the greatest number or size also has the greatest value of proportion. While for the stratum with the least size or smallest size will also have the least value of proportion. Now, to check this, if, we, uh, if what we did is correct, add all the proportions and the sum should be equal to one. Step three, Multiply each proportion obtained from step 2 to the sample size. So after determining the proportion for each stratum, we will now multiply this with our sample size which is 160. So for A, 0 0.2 times 160, we will get 32. For B, 0 0.3 times 160 equals 48. And both for C and D, 0 0.25 times 160, we will get 40. So in this case, it means or it shows that for stratum B, we will be having the most number of individuals that will be part of our sample and that is 48. And A has the least number of elements to be part of the sample and that is 32. So this is how the stratified sampling using proportional allocation looks like. The number of individuals coming from each stratum to become part of the sample 
will depend on their sizes and proportions. For our last problem, sample problem number two, the only given are the individual sizes of the groups or strata. And we also have the value of E or the margin of error, which is equal to 5% or 0 0.05. We will be using this value of E to determine the sample size later. But first, we must determine or identify the value of our population size, the capital N. Doing that, we have 500 plus 1,300 plus 1,600 plus 600. Our population size now will be equal to 4,000 or 4,000 individuals. To determine the sample size, we can use the Slovin's formula. Slovin's formula is sample size or small n equals population size all over 1 plus population size times e squared. So substituting the value of our population size or capital N and the margin of error or e to our Slovin's formula, the value now of our sample size would be 364. Take note that our sample size should always be in whole number because we are talking here of individuals that is the number of our sample. For equal allocation, all we have to do is to simply divide our sample size with the number of strata. So we have 364 divided by 4 equals 91. That means 91 members from each group will be part of the sample. So let us now determine the number of individuals per stratum that will become part of our sample size. So we already determined our population size, which is 4,000 and our sample size 364. For proportional allocation, we must first identify the individual proportions. So to get the proportion, we simply divide the size of each stratum with respect to the population size. So for A, 500 divided by 4,000, we will get 0 0.125. For B, 1,300 divided by 4,000, we have 0 0.325. For C, 1,600 divided by 4,000, we will get 0 0.40. And for D, 600 divided by 4,000, we will get 0 0.15. To check, we can add all of these quotients and the sum should be equal to 1. Next is, we will now determine the number of individuals coming from each group that will become part of our sample. All we have to do is to simply multiply the individual proportions with our sample size. So for A, we have 0 0.125 times 364, we will get 45.5 if we round this one off this will become 46. For B, 0 0.325 times 364, we will get 118.3 or simply 118. For C, 0 0.4 times 364, that is equal to 145.6 or round it up to 146. And lastly for D, 0 0.15 times 364, that is equal to 54.6 or rounded up to 55. If we're going to add all of this, the sum will be equal to 365. This value is still acceptable because the difference between this sum, 365, and the sample size that we computed, which is 364, is just 1. It could be plus or minus 1 as its difference compared to the computed sample size. 
So this is how we conduct and use the classer and stratified sampling techniques. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you learned a lot from this lesson video. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel, like and share this and my other lesson videos to your friends and classmates. See you again next time. God bless.